You're listening to another life-giving message from the Oasis Worship Center in Nashville, Tennessee. It's our prayer that this message will inspire and empower you for a positive change in your life and the world around you. And now, today's message. I'm so glad that you're here this morning on on holiday weekends. You never know who's going to show up because you don't know who went out of town. And Nashville seems to be such a city of transients. In fact, how many are not from Nashville? Let me see your hand. Look around, everybody. See, this is this is why it's a miracle that you're still here. Okay, so it means you got family someplace else, and and you chose to stay in town. Uh, did you have a great week? Did you have a great time? Great food? Come on, great dessert. How many had some pumpkin pie? Oh yeah, hallelujah, praise God, and all kinds of good stuff, and man, some of our el- my elder uh, right here, Aaron Davis, I just mentioned the word fried turkey, and uh, he, he fried me a turkey. How many have had fried turkey? Oh, I'm telling you, it's, it's nothing like the other stuff. You have to have, fr- Colonel Sanders would be proud, I'm telling you, he would. Well, I want to speak to you this morning, uh, just kind of on the, con- on the continued theme of Thanksgiving. How many, how many know that there is power in a thankful heart? Yeah. There is just great, great power in a thankful heart. And, you know, it's amazing. In fact, if you really just begin to check yourself, you'll, 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 you'll realize how many little things you complain about. It's, you, you have to watch for it because most people just don't catch it. I, I really ask the Holy Spirit to expose my complaining attitude, you know, I, because I, I still complain. How many, to be honest, you still complain? How many grumble about some things? How many, even in the middle of Thanksgiving, found yourself complaining about something? Doesn't taste right. Didn't do right. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. I mean, I got up this morning and, you know, and, and I'm going through my morning prayer routine and then I jumped in the shower and, 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 and then, you know, you turn the shower. How many, how, how many realize how cold it is as soon as you turn the shower off. It's hot, you know, water, and, and I'm going, Dadgum, it's cold in here. And I, I, and I just happened to see the end of the Titanic movie because it was on TNT. I didn't watch the whole thing, but I just, and I'm just thinking, man, it must have been cold in that water, you know, and I'm thinking, and then I'm thinking about the people, the homeless people that don't have anything, and here I, I'm just complaining about I'm cold for a moment. Now, I didn't get into heavy complaint, but it was complaining. You know, and it's amazing how many little things we can complain about. And then I just got slam dunked by that St. Jude's Children's Hospital commercial. I don't know if you saw that one or not, but wow, it, Jill and I weep. We say that had to be an anointed person, whoever, whoever wrote that, that uh, commercial for St. Jude's Children's Hospital because they're talking about the children. Said, I noticed my child watching television with one eye. I noticed a lump you know, on their head. I noticed my child complaining constantly about a headache and how many of them had developed cancer or leukemia or tumors or, or various things. And it kind of goes through that. And it said, you know, if you have a child that is sick, you know, there's St. Jude's Hospital. And if you, if, if you have a child that is healthy, be thankful. Be thankful. Be thankful. And man, I just realized, man, I, I have so much to be thankful for. And, and most all of you raised your hand that you still grumble. And how many would like to turn all of your grumbling into gratitude? Amen. Just all your grumbling into gratitude. So I want to talk to you for a few moments on turning your grumbling into gratitude. First Thessalonians 5, 16, and just read this verse with me. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And you say, well, pastor, didn't we read that last week? Yeah, but I think we could probably read that one every week. In fact, we could probably read that one every day because it just says rejoice always, rejoice always. How many know that's a lot? How many would say that's a lot? It means rejoice always and pray without ceasing. Now, that doesn't mean fall prostrate on the ground and wail and moan before God, but that means stay in a constant state of communication. Prayer is a, your communication link with God. And, and prayer is not a monologue, it's a dialogue. It's, it's praying and communicating and expecting some conversation back. How many, how many know how, how poor a relationship would be if people just talked to you and you never had a chance to respond? Some of you are married to people like that, aren't you? You're just, you know. But, you know, how, and, and then it goes into that, in, in everything give thanks. And, of course, we've been talking about that. So it's not for everything give thanks, but it's in everything. In everything. Everybody say in everything 
give thanks. So, but how do you give thanks in the middle of bad news? What do you do when, when bad news hits you? How do you give thanks in the middle of bad news? Uh, I, I read about a doctor this week and a young man that had come to this doctor and, and the young man found out after all the reports came back that he only had six months to live. So in shock, the, you know, the young man asked the doctor, he goes, you know, is, is there not anything else that can be done? After all, I've got my, I've got a whole life to live in front of me, a whole lifetime ahead of me. And the doctor thought about his question for a little while and, and then he, uh, he finally gave him a solution. He told the young man, go out and find the ugliest, most cantankerous woman in the country and marry her. Make sure you find a woman who will incessantly nag you and complain about everything that you say and do. Then go out and buy a rickety old beat up pickup truck the worst you can possibly find, preferably one that will break down on you every time you really need it the most. And then I want you to go buy a rundown old apartment right in the middle of downtown Brooklyn. <laughs> Somewhat skeptical, the young man looked up at the doctor and asked, he said, Doc, are you sure this is going to help me live longer? <laughs> he, he said, not at all, but it sure will make six months seem like a lifetime. So, so that's not really the way. <laughs> Pastor Don is like that one. <laughs> Anyhow, that's not necessarily the best way to handle bad news, but he says, in everything give thanks. Psalms 100 and, and verse 4, read it with me. Read it real loud. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. You know, not just his gates, and we think of that in the spiritual context, and what are the gates and where are the gates, but literally, we need to approach everything we do with a spirit of thanksgiving. Everything that you do, you approach your work with a spirit of thanksgiving? Do you approach your family with the spirit of thanksgiving? How do you enter and engage relationally with others? How do you enter and engage even in, in, in moments of trouble or conflict? This, this was really interesting. And I got, I got body slammed a couple times this week pretty good. You know, I, I, I have a Sprint as my cell phone service. And for the most part, it's, it's been good. You know, you got, you got your dead zones here and there. But for the most part, it's, it's good. And, and that's what we use here uh, at the Oasis. And uh, recently, about three, four months ago, you know, we're on the go so much and our kids are on the go so much. Uh, that, well, the two middle ones, two older are married. All, all of them are on the go. Destiny's on the go. She's 18 months. She's on the go everywhere. But, but the two middle ones, 11 and 13, it's just with their sports and all the different things. It's just, you know, where are they? You sometimes, I mean, I wonder where your kids are. And I, so, so we were just busy, and I thought, well, you know what, let's go ahead and get them like a kind of entry-level phone package at Sprint. Well, I went and did that, and, and, uh, uh, and two, two months had gone by, and I hadn't gotten a bill. And then uh, both their phones stopped working. And uh, I thought, well, that's strange. So I called. They said, Dad, the phones aren't working. And, and so I called, and they said, well, you haven't paid your bill. I said, well, I haven't got a bill. And, and they said, well, you, you owe, you know, $287. I said, well, first of all, there's no way it can be $287 because that's not the package that I ordered. And I said, secondly, I haven't gotten a bill, so I'm not, how can I pay a bill that I haven't gotten? And they start trying to, you know, correct me. Don't you hate it when they correct you and they're wrong? And, and, and so I'm getting a little attitude, but I stay on the phone with them for about an hour, and they say, oh, well, maybe there was a mistake here, and oh, they're sending it to some address someplace else. I said, well, that's not my address, and I didn't give them that address. I don't know that address. And I said, so it's, it's, it's not my fault. And I said, so set it straight, send me a bill, and I'll pay the bill, but i got to look at it and make sure it's the same thing that I ordered. And uh, so another month went by. They never turned the phones on. I get an, I, then I get a collection notice. And so, okay, and then at this point it's $397. Still don't have a phone. I call back again, and you know after you go through five tiers and you're on the phone for two hours... And half the people you can't understand. And, 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 I'm, and I'm, getting, I'm getting frustrated. My thanksgiving is going down. 
Uh, and, I, and I finally reach, you know, uh, somebody at the top and they say, Mr. Chambers, we'll have this taken care of. And, and, and I will call you back tonight to confirm it. And uh, I said, you need to call me back tonight. I said, I'm leaving for Europe tomorrow and I want to get this taken care of. I said, I may need to call my kids while I'm in Europe. And they said, we will call you back tonight. Well, guess what? They didn't call me back that night. So I get back. Here it is, you know, three more weeks, still no phone service. I get another collection, getting ready to turn over the collection in 10 days, $499. Okay, so I said, forget trying to get them on the phone. I go directly to the Sprint store. Okay, now I go to the Sprint store periodically again because our, our, our offices use the Sprint and we, you know, get new phones and upgrades and changing, you know, you know different things. And, and so I walk in and there's a guy in there that he's a preacher. He's the guy you walk in. It's the Cool Springs and his name's Anthony. And we always talk shop. And I'm always walking in just pretty upbeat. And I walk in, I'm going, I need to talk to somebody. And he goes, whoa, whoa. He goes, Reverend Chambers, where's that winning smile? I went, it'll probably be back in about 15 minutes if I can talk to the right person. I, he goes, wow. He goes, is that the way you look on Sunday morning when you get in front of your congregation? I said, no. No. He goes, well, if you have that face when you talk to our people, you may not get the results you want. I'm going, all right. Thanks, Anthony. I'm working on that right now. And I I was thankful that he actually challenged me. He challenged me, the pastor of the Oasis. Okay, you know, a man of God, 27 years in ministry and yeah, you got a bad attitude, preacher. And I'm going, well, well hey, it's like they, they're charging me 499 bucks, you know. And I'm, I'm, So anyhow, long story short, by the time I, I got to the person I needed to talk to, I had a smile on my face. I said, I'm sure there's just some misunderstanding here. <laughs> we have an opportunity. He goes, oh, he goes, Mr. Chambers, we'll take care of this. He goes, somebody really messed up. And I, I, in 10 minutes' time, he had it fixed. I said, I know the most that I would owe would be like $170. I said, I've kind of tracked this down to like three bucks a day. I said, that's, I mean, I got the day it was like cut off and everything. I said, the most I did was 174 bucks. He goes, he said, I can do better than that. He goes, 89 bucks right now. Oh, hallelujah. From 499 to 89, and the people of God said, amen. So, you know, there's just something about this entering anywhere with the spirit of thanksgiving, even in conflict. I mean, how many have had some people do you wrong and you want to go in and you want to give them a piece of your mind? I'm just telling you, do it, but do it with a smile. And do it with thanksgiving, expecting that God is going to turn it around. You know, the alternative, if it really says enter his gates with thanksgiving. And so that means it's an entry point. You know, in other words, gratitude is the gateway to God. Say that with me. Gratitude is the gateway to God. Say it one more time. Gratitude is the gateway to God. Well, could it be if gratitude is the gateway to God that ingratitude could keep the gates shut? And it could be a doorway to darkness and to depression. Look at Romans chapter 1, verse 20. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. People are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were, nor were thankful. Say that with me. Nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened, professing to be wise, they became fools. Now, this verse is so obvious. I mean, it just, it just means that it's obnoxiously obvious that there is a God, and yet millions of people live as though there isn't. He's saying, pretty much, come on, all you have to do is look around. Whether you want to call it intelligent design or whatever, there is a God. Somebody made what we have, the air that we breathe, everything about it. And, and to say otherwise, that you might as well go if, if somebody said, man, that's a nice car. Where did you get it? Oh, it evolved. 
I actually bought a Hot Wheels back about 20 years ago, and it just... Why not? Huh? Or the house that you're living in. Oh, you know what? About 20 years ago, there were just trees here. All of a sudden, it just evolved into a house. I don't know how. There's the plumbing and the... Just, it's a miracle. So in other words, everything we see speaks of a God. And he's saying that people choose to live and act as though there isn't one. And when you do, when you, when, you, when, you, when you behave that way, he said the results are you become an ingrate or unthankful. They were not thankful. And something happens. When people live as though there's no God, it produces ingratitude. Now, ingratitude will produce two things inside of you. You might want to write them down. Ingratitude will produce two things inside of you. Number one, futile thoughts. That's what he says. Although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts. So futile thinking. Futile thinking is this, useless, pointless, fruitless, unsuccessful, vain, ineffective, ineffectual, or wasted. And how many people live just a wasted life? How many people live a wasted life? And futile thoughts will basically bring you to this point where you actually begin to think, what's the use? Why try harder? Why give my best? That stems from an unthankful attitude of ingratitude. Second thing ingratitude will produce is darkened hearts. He says, and their foolish hearts were darkened. You see, a heart that is unthankful will be filled with darkness. A heart that is unthankful will be filled with darkness. Now, in the darkness, how many, how many realize you can't see things clearly in the darkness? And how many would agree that most of the world is not seeing things really very clearly? Because they scream about the rights to kill a baby and scream about anybody that wants to kill a, a, a fish or a whale or a dolphin. Would you say that's a little twisted thinking? They're not thinking clearly. I want the right to kill my baby, but don't you dare kill a little animal for its fur. There's some perverted thinking. People aren't thinking clearly. They're not thinking clearly. Or, or, or you, you, you can be uh, uh, thrown in jail for killing the... If you're in an automobile accident and a woman is pregnant... Six months, they can get you for manslaughter for the death of that baby while a doctor at the exact same time is killing one in the womb. How many say, somebody is in the dark here. Somebody's not thinking clearly. They loco in la cabeza. That's darkened hearts. Darkened hearts. The problem is with a dark heart, is you begin to speak darkly. From the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Dark words will lead to a depressed state of mind and existence. Numbers 13 and 14 talks about the bad report that the, the ten spies came back and gave to Moses. And not only Moses, because bad reports have a way of traveling very quickly. How many have noticed that? Bad news travels much faster than good news. How many have noticed that? And... and and it's funny because bad news can be the headlines. And if the bad news was wrong, they'll do the correction on the 32nd page of the news at the bottom of the page. Because they would rather the bad thought stay in somebody's mind than a correction of we were wrong. Ten spies came back with a bad report. Only two came back with a good report. But if, if you'll remember, it was, it was basically the people gave a bad report about the promises of God. And then they proceeded to murmur and complain. If you read it, they murmured and they complained. They grumbled all night about Moses' leadership, about the food, about the accommodations, about the unfamiliar surroundings. Now watch this. That ingratitude caused them to wander in circles for 40 years. What should have taken 40 days, a 40-day passage, turned into a 40 years of wandering. Now listen to me closely. Ingratitude 
will keep you wandering in circles for years. And if you've just been going around in circles and you never seem to see promotion, you never seem to see advancement, you never seem to get ahead, you never seem to get a raise, you never... Are you listening to me, church? I think you can trace this back to an ungrateful heart somewhere in your life. What should have taken 40 days took 40 years. You know, our first Thanksgiving in Tennessee, uh, my daughter Melody was reminding me of it actually on Thanksgiving. It was kind of funny because... You know, my, my kids come back and they'll tell me some stuff that, that, I, that, that I forget. And they said, Dad, you know, we, our first Thanksgiving, we were, all, we were excited to be in Tennessee. And there was somebody, somebody I'd preached for over uh, in the eastern part of Tennessee. And they said, you know, we, we've got a place over here if you want to come and stay. Well, we were just fresh getting here. And we had some of our staff and some of our family. And, and they'd really painted this thing as, hey, it'll be great. And you can do this and you can do this over in Pigeon Forge. You know, and of course, it's a... It's kind of a vacation spot, one of the Smoky Mountains right there and, and uh, Dollywood. You know, so anyhow, we, we, we all took off and, 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 and they'd, they'd built this thing all up, man. And, and we got there and it was in a mobile home park, not just a mobile home park. It was a ratty mobile home park. It was trailer trash mobile home park. And, and we had the key to the place. We got in there. It stunk. They're, they're, the, the beds all went. I mean, even if you didn't want to be together, you were going to be together. <laughs> it, it was a rat trap. And I'm telling you, it, and, and everybody was complaining and I just, and Melody said, you should remind me, going, she's just, Dad, you just kept saying, you know what, let's just be thankful. Let's be thankful. Let's be thankful. Let's be thankful. And, you know, Golden Corral for our Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> but you know what? And, but she reminded me, she goes, Dad, you just kept an upbeat spirit. And, you know, I don't always remember that, but it's like, wow. I went, well, thank God. And so she had a pleasant memory <laughs> of Golden Corral and, yeah. Dollywood. Anyhow, I, I, I want to show you this because what happened with the, with the Israelites still will happen with us if ingratitude is the prevailing thing in our life. Ingratitude will create the same three life experiences in your life that it produced in the Israelites. First of all, it produced frustration. You might want to write that down. And, and this is so commonplace in the lives of of believers, they live a life of frustration. What is that? That's aggravation and that's irritation. It's frustrating to be so close to a promise, so close to a raise, so close to a promotion, so close to uh, the marriage, so close to the dream and never seem to get there. And people live on the edge like that. Filled with hope, but their hopes seem to be continually dashed. There's a verse of Scripture that says, Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But I'm telling you that sick heart is usually the result of a spirit of ingratitude, unthankful. And I'm just telling you, it says, In everything, give thanks. So no matter how bad, if you are in the middle of trailer trash and having to eat the worst meal of your life, somehow find something to give thanks over. Secondly, it will produce frailty. Frailty. You know, weakness and infirmity is so commonplace among the church, and the church is just as sick as people in the world. Doctors globally have now confirmed that people of faith, positive, upbeat attitudes, have far fewer sicknesses and diseases than their counterparts. If you suffer chronic sickness, ingratitude could be the source. Ingratitude could be the source. Number three, finally, third thing was futility. Futility, which is ineffective and unsuccessful. Ingratitude will make you ineffective in life. It'll make you ineffective in your career. It'll make you ineffective in your relationships. Are you hearing me? I'm preaching a good word on this Thanksgiving weekend. Futility. Futility. You see, some people here today still don't get it. They've got a higher education, more talent, better looking. They've got more bills, yet less pay, more stress, yet less favor. And yet they've got more education, they've got more degrees, and somebody over here is happier, making less money. What is that? Living a life of futility. 
is always connected to ingratitude. Now, Psalms 107, verse 21, read it with me real good and loud. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and his wonderful works to the children of men. To the, now watch this. He's saying this. Give thanks to the Lord. Where? In front of the children of men. So don't just do this thing on a Sunday morning kind of under your breath. Hallelujah. But in front of the children of men. Do you let your thanksgiving spill over in your workplace? Do you let your thanksgiving spill over, you know, in your family time? How thankful are you in front of your family? How thankful are you at work? Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and, and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. This is so key, and please write down this bullet point. A thankful heart is not just inward, but upward and outward. That is so key, and I want you to catch it. A thankful heart is not just inward. Well, the Lord knows I'm thankful. That's like the guy told his wife, said, you know, honey, you never tell me you love me. He said, well, I told you 30 years ago. If I ever change my mind, I'll let you know. A thankful heart is something that needs to be expressed continually on an ongoing basis. A thankful heart is not just inward, but upward and also outward. Entering his gates with thanksgiving in our heart is not just towards God, but even towards others. This rocked my world this week. And as I begin to really meditate and think this, you see, there are many people thank, that many people thank God, but don't know how to thank and appreciate the people that God used to bless them. That's good preaching, Pastor Danny. We, need, we needed to hear that. That's really good. No, this is, this is really important. There are people in this room that know how to thank God, but you don't know how to thank the people that God used to bless you and get you where you are today. And so, here's, here's my challenge. Between now and Christmas, okay? And I'm closing with this. Between now and Christmas, I want you to get up 30 minutes early. I'm going to do this. I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to lead by example. I'm going to get up 30 minutes early. And in that 30 minutes, I'm going to enter God's gateway to blessing with a thankful heart in three areas right here. Daily, I want you to be thankful. Please write these down. You're not going to remember them. Either do that or get the CD as soon as we're done. Listen, daily, I'm going to challenge you between now and Christmas. How many want to have the best Christmas you've ever had in your life? If you'll do these three things. I really felt prompted of the Lord. Kevin, I want you to write it down, all right? Okay. Don't play yet. Write this down. I'm, I'm serious. I really felt the, I felt the prompting of the Lord on this. He said, if, if, if the people of the Oasis will do this, this will be the most glorious Christmas they've ever had. And not because of what you're getting from somebody, but what you're receiving from God. Watch this. Number one, be thankful for some aspect of God's character, goodness, faithfulness, or blessing in your life. That's the first thing. So in that first 30 minutes, just be thankful. Be, and say it out loud. Say it out loud. Verbalize your gratitude to God. Write him a song. This is a city of songwriters. Write him a song. Write him a song. He loves songs of gratitude. I'm telling you, it's one of the reasons I think he liked David so much. He just likes it. You know, when my little girl, Destiny, she's already singing. I can't understand a fraction of what she says. But she just, she just does her little head like this. And I don't go, hey, if you can't sing on pitch any better than I, just shut up. I don't do that. Why? Because she's just having joy in front of her daddy. On the other hand, you know, she does bellyache some. She gets to screaming and crying when things don't go her way. That's the most obnoxious sound I have ever heard in my life. Maybe it's because I'm almost 50, but I can't tolerate that. <laughs> I, don't, I can't tolerate that like I used to could tolerate it. And I go, Jill, please, either take her in the other room or I have to leave the house. I can't handle this complaining. And you think how old God is. I just think he probably has a real low tolerance. Carrie, don't you think he has a real low tolerance for complaining? I'm serious. You don't think he does? Go back and look. When, when they, they were complaining, he told Moses, Moses, get out of the way. I'm going to kill all of them. Start over with you. 
I'm telling you, that's a great, 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 great grandpa. No, I, I just think, anyhow, but thank him for some aspect of who he is or what he's done for you. You know what, even thanking him for your eyesight or for your hearing. Ah, oh, you, you take those things for granted. Man, cover your eyes for three days. Plug your ears for three days. Some of you would like to plug your ears for three days probably. But, but you know what? You, you, you don't realize how many body parts that you need to thank him for. We got a few little pains and aches here and there. But thank God you have legs to walk on. You know it? Complain about your car. Don't drive it for a week and walk everywhere. And you'll get in that thing and say, thank God for this automobile. You know, there's so many things to be thankful. Number two, number two, very important. Be thankful for a person who had they not been there, your life would have been vastly different. Now, this is very, very important. In that first 30 minutes, be thankful for a person who had they not been there, your life would have been vastly different. And thank the Lord out loud. But then beyond that, call them. Now, if you get up at 5 in the morning, don't call them at 5 in the morning. So that, but that put that on your calendar for the day to call this person today. This is about 30 people between now and Christmas that I want you to do that with. Either call them or email them. Or better yet, I would encourage you to go buy some of those little thank you notes. You can get them at Walgreens or any place else. You can get a little box of 20 or 30 for 10 bucks and get them. And over the next 30 days, I just begin to write notes, you know, to, to, and remember stages of your life when someone came in you may not they may not even be in your life at this point you know as I begin to think about this there are key people throughout my life had they not been there my life would be vastly different and I have to tell you I don't know that I would be here today there are people that I have to thank that you will never meet until we get to heaven but if you could tell them today thank you you would because you wouldn't have liked the me before they helped to shape me in some way that has helped me become who I am today. I owe them some gratitude. I owe them some thanks. There are people that came into my life when I was ready to drop out of the ministry and a few encouraging words kept me in the ministry. You know what? I'm thankful for them. And yet I don't verbalize that thanks nearly enough. God has used people like that. You know, Joseph even knew how to thank the people that had caused him great pain. Because the pain was a passage and a process that got him to where he was. And he wouldn't have become who he was had he not gone through the pain he went through. And he still knew how to thank his brothers for throwing him in the pit. Oh, great God Almighty. Be thankful. You remember Alex Haley, the author of Roots, the, the old series from years ago. He had an unusual picture hanging on his office wall. It was a picture of a turtle on top of a fence post. A turtle on top of a fence post. And people would ask him, why is that there? Alex answered, every time I write something significant, every time I read my words and think that they are wonderful and begin to feel proud of myself, I look at the turtle on top of the fence post and remember that he didn't get there on his own. <laughs> and the people of God said, amen, amen. And then third, and I close with this, be thankful for a quality that you admire in a family member or a co-worker. Be thankful for a quality that you admire in a family member or a co-worker. Let them know it. Same thing with notes or cards or flowers or something. Something. Say it out loud. Appreciate them face to face. If possible, in earshot of someone else so that you can begin to breed a spirit of thanksgiving in your company or your family. Woo! Yay, Lord, that is good, Carl. I like that. I'm preaching myself happy with this thing. I'm telling you, I was just getting happy. I was getting, are you writing it down, Kevin? Okay. All right. Now, this is important. This is important. And I, and I close with this. because I've, I've closed three times, so I'm really going to close this time. But listen to this. How many have noticed that when you first, especially in the romantic department, in the, in the romance realm, 
Some of you that are married, some of you that are engaged right now, some of you that are dating, some of you that are hoping to date, whatever the, whatever the category you fit in, you'll, you'll notice this, that when you first are attracted to someone, all you notice is their qualities. That's all you notice. You've heard the phrase, love is blind. But somehow, the longer you're in that relationship, the blinders begin to come off. And you go, I wonder why I didn't see that when I first met them. And you begin to notice the flaws. And some weird, bizarre tendency begins to erupt in you that you begin to focus on the flaws rather than the qualities. And it begins to destroy the relationship. And I want to challenge you in these next four weeks or so between Thanksgiving and Christmas, every day, every day, be thankful for a quality that you admire in a family member or a coworker. Now, this, this is why that's important. The more you notice the flaws in others, the more that others will notice the flaws in you. <laughs> because every deed is a seed. <laughs> and how many would just rather not anybody notice all the flaws? Because you know where all your flaws are, and you try your best to cover them all up. But the more you notice flaws in others the more that others will notice the flaws in you. The more you praise the qualities in others, the more that others will praise the qualities in you. Amen? Did you get anything out of this? You ready to go for it? Let's go for it, all right? Let's go for it. Stand up on your feet. Hey, this is a no hoopla kind of message. It's Thanksgiving. It's a weekend. And it's, uh, this is just practical, you guys. And I'm serious. I really... I'm, I'm going to lead by example. I'm going to do, how many will do this with me? How many will do this over the next 30 days? How many will not do it? You've just determined you're not going to do it. You don't want to be thankful for anything. You're not going to raise your hand, are you? Because we would body slam you right now and cast that devil out of you. That's what we'd do. And sick Tommy on you. Aaron carries a gun, smokes turkeys. Big turkeys, no, not that kind. <laughs> Are you thankful today? Are you thankful today? Yeah. Come on, let's just tell them. God, we're thankful. God, we just love you. We're not asking for anything. We're just thankful. Come on, don't ask him for anything right now. Just say, Father, I'm thankful. Lord, I thank you. Thank you for your amazing grace, your goodness, your love. Lord, your mercy, your, your tender compassion towards us. Lord, your long-suffering, your patient with us. <laughs> God, we're so impatient with other people, and yet you are so patient with us. Oh, there is no one like you, and we just love you. God, at the end of the service, we just don't ask you for anything. We just thank you. We just thank you, and we thank you in things that are even difficult right now and in the midst of those things. Lord, our hearts are filled with gratitude for who you are, not just for what you do, but for who you are to us. And Lord, I throw out this challenge and God, I just ask that you touch the hearts of these people to really be able to, to do this for the next 30 days or so between now and Christmas to, to really practice these things, arising 30 minutes early. And Lord, let it be 30 minutes of gratitude and to enter your gates. Lord, not just thanking upward, but outward. Lord, verbalizing, vocalizing, writing it down. God, it'll do something in us and it'll do something through us. And Father, we just ask these things today in the name of Jesus. And we give you the praise for that. We give you the praise for that. We give you the praise.